again to the Tabernacle Baptist Church midweek service by the means of this media. We're glad that you are joining us or will be joining us when you can. We are counted a real blessing to be able to have this opportunity that God has given us because of the changes that came about because of the pandemic. We're still able to share uh, the message of Christ and fellowship one with another this way. But it's been placed upon my heart and uh, you may hear me mention it more than one time. Please don't substitute the media ministry for local assembly unless you're providentially hindered and cannot attend. And there are people who cannot providentially attend, or attend uh, public worship. But for you that can, I pray that you've not lost the importance of publicly assembling in your local church. The Bible said, not forsaking the assembling of yourselves as the manner of some are, as you see the day approaching. God has designed community, worship, and fellowship, preaching and teaching, that he will do things through that means that he won't do any other way. Your church needs you. Your pastor needs you. And you need each other. And God has so designed it that way, ladies and gentlemen. And like I said, we're tremendously happy about this opportunity and the response that we're having from this ministry. But we only are using it for an encouragement and for those that are providentially hindered from coming. So, please, if it's become a habit, and it could be, ladies and gentlemen, there's an old saying, it's twice as hard to get back in church as it is to get out of church. So, please, once again, this midweek Bible study, we want you to turn to 1 Timothy 6.6. 6. And uh, I want to ask a question tonight because it comes up quite often. Do you have a lasting happiness? Do you have a lasting happiness? If not, let us look to what a lasting happiness really is. Father, we ask you to bless this time of Bible study. And it seems that that which is lacking in so many people is a lasting happiness. And you know, we need to understand that happiness cannot come from the outside, except for a temporary time. What we want to look at tonight is a lasting happiness, one that will last into eternity, one that will be based upon not circumstance or feeling but based upon the principle that the Bible tells us how to have a lasting happiness. Satan has brought about a great deception and a lie and brought to pass that happiness comes from without or what I have. But the Bible teaches that Lasting happiness comes from 
the inside. Bless this Bible study and we'll praise you in Christ's name. Amen. One of Webster's definitions for a happy is enjoying well-being and contentment. And I don't want to ask you the question. Do you have a lasting happiness? Now, before you answer, do you have a lasting happiness? Now, there are various types of happiness. There's the happiness of wealth. There's the happiness of health. The happiness of family. The happiness of friends. And even the happiness of achievements. But remember the Bible said life is but a vapor that appeareth for a little while and then vanisheth away. While there's nothing wrong with these areas of happiness, they're temporal. They're temporary. You see, there is only one type of lasting happiness that is permanent. And that spiritual happiness for all the rest of these can and most likely and one day for sure will be lost. Why? Because life is but a vapor that appeareth for a little while. May I say at the onset of the lesson, if you're without Jesus Christ as your Savior, your happiness is only temporary. Listen to me. Your happiness, if you're without Christ, and you're drawing your happiness from those areas that we just mentioned, it's only temporary. Today, if you will be honest with yourself and with God, you can find a lasting happiness you see Christ, Christian we ought to be the happiest people on the face of the earth based upon the promises of God in Christ we're more than conquerors in Christ the Bible tells us that he shall never leave us nor forsake us because our happiness is in Christ, circumstances or testings cannot rob that. You see, as believers, God has given us a song in our hearts. And I believe that we should let others know that it is there. Now listen to me for a very important phrase. True happiness is not something that we produce. It is something we must possess. Let me say it again. True happiness is not something we produce. It is something that we must possess. And I want to give you some reasons for being happy today and if these don't make you happy, then you'll need to spend some more time with the Lord. Number one, happiness begins in knowing that God is your Father. You see, every heart created has a void. And that void as a spiritual need. You see, God is not everyone's father. In fact, Jesus told the Pharisees that they were of their father, the devil. And the devil deceives by blinding people, enticing people with a temporary fulfillment of the desires that they have. 
whether they're in line with God's word or not. I want it. I need it. I deserve it. And I'm going to get it. That's his model. That's Satan's model. The Bible said in John 8, 44, You're your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. You see, he was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. He promises the world which will, can be delivered into hell. Think about that. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. To see the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man is a false doctrine not in the Bible. It is true. All of humanity are the creation of God. But only those who have been born again through the saving work of Jesus Christ on the cross are the children of God. But Satan lies. Satan lies. Look at it. John chapter 1 verse 12 through 13. But as many as receive him. Receive Christ. As personal savior. You see the Bible said all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And there's none righteous no not one. I'm a sinner. You're a sinner. We've all sinned. But the Bible said because God loved us and he was not willing that we should perish in our sin, he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to become sin who knew no sin that we might be able to have the righteousness of God. And that was accomplished on the cross. When Jesus died on the cross, because without the shedding of blood, there's no remission. But when he willfully, willfully, not only obeyed the Father, but for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame thereof. And there, through his death, he paid the sin debt. Through his resurrection, the payment was accepted. Therefore, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord through the repenting of their sin and trusting his death, burial, and resurrection, and will ask him to forgive them and save them, God said, He would save. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in faith shall be saved. Think about that. Notice that. But as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of God. The new birth. The new birth. When you accept Christ as personal Savior, he creates a New person. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore any man or person in Christ is a new creature. And the evidence is by the fact that their life changes. Not overnight. There are some rare uh, people that uh have a quicker spiritual growth. But spiritual growth is a process. And the Holy Spirit begins to change. The want to. And therefore the behavior becomes changed. Look at it. Even to them that believe on his name. Which was born not of blood. Nor the will of flesh nor the will of man, but of God. You see, to know that I can always call on Him when I need Him, to know that He is already 
and always ready to pour out his blessings on me, to know that he loved me so much that he gave his son to die in my place is where real happiness begins, lasting happiness. Because the Bible says, he said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. See, the moment that you're saved, you receive eternal life. And one day, the decision you made to trust Christ will be rewarded with what Jesus said through Paul to be absent from the bodies to be present with the Lord. One day, because you've trusted the Lord, you will depart this life, you will be carried into heaven, and one day when God has settled the claim against this world and eternity begins, you'll spend it with Jesus Christ. That's where lasting happiness starts. To know that I've made my peace with God. That I've repented of my sins and trusted Jesus Christ as personal Savior. <clears throat> and no matter what circumstance, no matter what may come in this life, nothing can separate me from the promise God made. I will never, never leave you nor forsake you. I go to prepare a place for you that where I am there you may be also. And if I go, I will come again. Why? To get those that trusted him so that we might be where he is. Think about that. Lasting happiness. As I said, there's a lot of temporal happiness, especially when people have forsaken the word of God. They've cast it down. They've thrown it aside. They believe the lie of the devil. And they walk in the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. Sure, there's temporal pleasure. If there wasn't, remember what Moses said? He chose to endure the suffering with God's people than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. If sin wasn't pleasant, nobody would do it. But the wages of sin is death. And that's where Satan lies. That's why we need the void that's in our heart. We need God to be our Heavenly Father. He is the creator of all of humanity, but he's only the father of those that have accepted his son, Jesus Christ, and his death, burial, and resurrection for the payment of sin. Listen, that's where it begins. Moses had the pleasures of this world for a season. Look at him. He was second only to Pharaoh. He had the pleasures of this, of this world being in royalty and everything else. But he realized one day, this happiness is temporal. And one day, it's going to be gone because I'm going to depart this world. But when he saw the joy of the people who knew Christ as personal Savior, and no matter what was going on in their life, no matter the trials they were under, no matter the suffering they were under, they could still sing the praises of God because of the promise that Jesus made. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. And he that believeth in me shall never die. That was the lasting happiness that they had. And listen to me. That's where it begins. Secondly, lasting happiness is knowing that one day, one day, whether in this life or out of this life, the trumpet's going to sound. And the dead in Christ are going to rise first. And we that alive remain are going to be called out and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Why? That lasting happiness is to know, ladies and gentlemen, no matter what comes our way, we shall never be separated from the love of God. We are no longer under condemnation. 
We have become through the new birth children of God. Think about that. Are we perfect? No, we sin every day. But we confess that sin. We repent of that sin. And the Lord said in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, which applies to believers only. If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Oh, think about it, ladies and gentlemen. Paul made the statement, which listen to me real carefully. If in this life only we have hope, then we're men most miserable. Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. Moses was awful smart when he come to realize, sure, I got pleasure in this sin, but one day I'm going to have to stand before God and give an account of it. Be not deceived, for whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. He that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of life reap life everlasting. I'm not here trying to deceive you. There is pleasure in sin, but I must warn you, ladies and gentlemen, it's temporary. It's temporary. It will not last for eternity. To break God's law is a death sentence. And that has to be paid for and can only be paid for by Christ. Listen to me. Lasting happiness. Lasting happiness. It can only be found through God as our Heavenly Father. Through Christ as our Savior. And through the Bible and its promises that God has given us that. To be absent with the bodies, to be present with the Lord. Think about that. Think about it as an unbeliever who sold out for the lust of the flesh. And be honest with me now. We know that as I said, sin does bring a temporal or temporary pleasure, but even to the unsaved. God has given us a conscience. Oh yeah, he has. And that conscience, because the conscience, <coughs> excuse me, has a, it's kind of like a fever. Uh, it begins to be troubled when something we know we shouldn't be doing, we're deliberately doing. Oh, listen to me. You want lasting happiness? It has to start with your relationship and God becoming your Heavenly Father. Christ being your Savior so He can allow God to be your Heavenly Father. And to realize one day the rapture is going to take place for the saved and for the unsaved then there's going to be a departure into the lake of fire when it's all said and done. Oh, don't sell yourself short. And as I said, when I listed some of these temporal pleasures, use them in the proper perspective. Use them in the proper perspective. Think about that real carefully. Use your wealth to support the cause of Christ. Don't misuse the happiness of health. Take care of it. Don't abuse the happiness that your family can bring by not loving them like you ought to. Don't misuse the happiness that friends can come, but do not use them as long as they are providing what you want instead of you being what they need. Or don't get full of pride because of the uh, achievements of life. The Bible said it's God that giveth thee the power to get wealth. It's God that raises up and takes down. I'm not against those things I've said, but don't let Satan cause you to misuse them. Use them for the glory of God, and you can't do that until you come to Christ and get saved. But you're selling yourself short. If you don't realize those lusts 
and sins of the flesh are temporary, but eternity is forever. Father, help the message to be anointed with the power of God. And may your Holy Spirit speak to every single person that'll hear it. You have given us these things for the joy and the comfort of life as long as we use them in the right perspective. That's to glorify you. That's to lift up Christ and not let them become our control, but control them through Jesus. For that one that's not saved, please save them. For that believer who has allowed some of these areas of temporal pleasure begin to lead them astray, awaken them to the idea there's nothing wrong with what we've taught until they become controlled of us. Bless the lesson and we'll praise you in Christ's name. Amen.